Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. All week long, we've been talking about reconciliation, peacemaking. We've been talking about the whole idea of what is what is, what to do next. What is our task? What is our job as Christians? The Father has equipped each and every one of us to be His people through our personality, through the gifts, through the skills that He has given us. He has so gifted us that each one of us has groups of friends who need to know and walk with Him, who just need to rub shoulders with someone who loves God. Yes, these are hard times. And yes, we're still trying to figure out many things about the election, but remember, we live in a democracy. And in a democracy, someone must win, someone must lose. But remember, God tells us way back in Psalm 112 that we don't have to fear whether it's good news or bad news, because we are his righteous servants. He is with us. And so we've been talking this week about healing, restoration. We've been talking about the whole idea of what do we do, being a peacemaker, binding up the wounds around us. That's what we get to do. We are the physicians that the world needs. We are the one who carries the balm. We carry the balm physically. We carry it spiritually into people's lives. One verse in Scripture says, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news to Jerusalem. We get to speak good news into people's lives. That's their Jerusalem. So what's the idea here? As Christians, in this po and while we're still in this pandemic, while we're post-election, where people have been demonized, people have been fearful, people have demonstrated, people are afraid. One week they're trying to run people off, off, off the road. We make our needs, we make what we want known. That's fine. But now we need to work at reconciliation. Now we need to work at repentance and peace. Now how do we get to reconciliation? Well, we've been mentioning that all week. We speak peace. We bring peace. We speak love into people's lives. We speak hope there. Confession of our issues helps us. Because when we confess, we say, Father, I need your power, which is greater than me, to Lord, to speak into my heart, because, Lord, my heart is wayward. As Jeremiah says, who can trust it? Then after that, after confession, we need to work at repentance. Lord, I repent. Because repentance sometimes means I need to ask forgiveness of my brother, and I need to confess to my brother or my sister. Then that then leads to this. Peace. Remember, we talked about being a peacemaker yesterday, being a healer yesterday. But what's next? That four-letter word that we so often misuse. That four-letter word that means so much to people. That four-letter word that speaks security in the people's hearts. That four-letter word that makes you jump with joy or makes you cower in fear. What's that four-letter word? It's love. It's love. And like I said, English is a poor language. We abuse it because we use the word love for everything. I love you. I love you. Oh, I hate you. I love you. What is God saying here? First of all, Jesus tells us this in John 13, 34. Love each other as I have loved you. Now, how does, how does Jesus love us? He loves us unconditionally. Which then means that despite all the things that have gone on around us, we need to love each other unconditionally. That's agape, A-G-A-P-E love, agape love. 1 John chapter 3 is all about love. He says, now love is this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and denies them to his brothers and sisters, where's the love in him? Am I willing to give up my, my right to be right? To love my brother, to love my sister, to let them know the love of God, to love them unconditionally? Because that is our job, to show the love of God. Remember, God is love. If we're his children, therefore we need to demonstrate that on a daily basis. Loving people. Not hating them, not writing their name down, I'm going to get even. 
No. Loving them. Peter helps us here. He says, We are believers in God, raised in Him from the dead, who gave us His glory, so that by faith our hope is in God. Since you have purified your souls in obedience to the truth for a sincere love of the brothers, fervently love each other from the heart. What is he saying there? He's saying, have a sincere love for the brothers that, and sisters that comes from the heart, not faked, not full of hypocrisy, but a genuine love, a genuine care for the brothers. Not just, oh, yes, you're my friend. Yes, oh, yes, that's so good. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, not that you're my family. That's storge, philos, storge. No, the idea of agape, Lord. I want the love that I have for my brothers and sisters to be without fakery. Now, you all know what it feels like when someone is being fake with you, when you feel like they're being a hypocrite, when you feel like they're, they're, their words don't mean what they say. The Father says, no, in this age, in this latter part of 2020, with this pandemic, with all the issues, isms, and all the things going on around us, I need you to love without fakery. I need you to love sincerely from the heart. You say, but I'll be wounded, I'll be hurt. Perfect love casts out fear. Yeah, there will be hurt, but you're loving perfectly. And as you love perfectly, the Father will, will bind up that brokenheartedness and remove the fear. Paul picks up on the same idea. In Romans chapter 12, verse, verse 9 and 10, he says, Love must be free from hypocrisy. Detest what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. There's philos. And give preference to one another in honor. In other words, agape one another. Don't just philos, put your arm around. Take care of one another. Why? Because you want, excuse me, you want your love for the brethren. We want our love for the brethren to be without hypocrisy. Now, what is hypocrisy? Here's a fast definition. We wear the mask that says one thing, does another. We hide behind the mask. Hey, I love you. We hide behind the mask. Oh, let me be loving to you today. I hate you. Oh, let me wear the mask. The Father says, no, folks. The time for mask wearing is over. Because the people around us are looking for someone to show them the Father. Without hypocrisy. Without fakery. But when, with sincerity of heart. Because with sincerity of heart, repentance comes. With sincerity of heart, reconciliation comes. Because it comes from here, deep inside of us. That's what Peter and that's what Paul are saying. That it may come that it comes from deep inside of us. Because it is the Father's love in us flowing out. It is the Father's presence in us flowing out. Deep inside of us. Why? Because the Father wants each one of us to be woke. He wants us to be real with each other. He wants us to understand what's going on around us and understand that we have the answer. We are the balm in Gilead. We are the physician. Why? Because Jesus Christ lives within us. We are his children called by his name. Yes. We bring the balm. Yes. We are the doctors, yes. We are the physicians, yes. We are the peacemakers, yes. We are the ones who don't fear bad news, yes. We're the ones who love unconditionally, yes. Because we are loved unconditionally. If we want healing to take place, if we want peace to take place, if we want reconciliation to take place, we have to be about our Father's business. Being His children. Letting His light in us shine in this darkness. 
Precious Jesus, thank you for today. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you for all the trials we've been through in this year. Lord, we give them to you, that, Father, you would use us. Lord, to be your physicians, your healers, your lovers, your peacemakers. These things, Jesus, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Lord. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear friends.